Hello everyone, it is Ryan here with Overkill Wargaming and today we are doing a painting tutorial for a troll kin- or a, a troll bloods, sorry, fen blade. So the first color I'm going to be using here is the fang from Citadel, that is the only range I use uh, in this tutorial. And that's just going over all of the skin areas. Uh, make sure to make uh, to thin the paint because it can clog a little bit sometimes. Um, I'm pretty sure it took me about two and a like two coats and then a little a few patch ups on this to get a solid color. But uh, just take your time and make sure it's all watered down and you know nice and thin. So then we move on to our next base color, which is Mechanicus Standard Gray, and this is going to be going on the pants mostly. So once again, just make sure your paint is nice and thin. Of course, there's not as much detail on these pants as the skin, but uh, just make sure it's nice and thin so that it doesn't clog any details. So our next color is Mornfang Brown, and now this is going to be going on basically all of the lighter brown areas, so all the straps, um, the belts, all that kind of stuff. Um, so be careful with this, make sure to use a, a brush you have good control over so that you don't spill onto the, uh, the gray and the blue. Uh, if you get on the black areas, it's no big deal, those will be covered in the future. But uh, yeah, take your time and don't mess up any of the colors you already hit. So with our next paint, we will be painting all of the armor and the sword on the Fen Blade with Lead Belcher, a very dark metallic color from Citadel, of course. Uh, and once this is washed, it'll leave a very good effect on the armor, making it look a bit older, a bit more worn. Um, so again, just be careful not to cover any of the areas that um, we've already hit with other colors, because silver is a bit of a pain to cover back up. But uh, yeah, if you just take your time, everything will look good, and you won't have uh, anything to clean up. So now we move on to Rhinox Hide to finish the rest of the brown areas. So this is mostly uh, the, uh, what, are, what are those called, on the, on the sword, it's like kind of a place where you can grab, <laughs> I'm not too sure what it's called on great swords, but uh, that area there. And then there's a couple of pouches and bags on the, uh, the back of the belt that will also be this color. And uh, yeah, be careful not to get it on any of the colors as we've said before, um, just so you uh, can save some time. So now we're on to Balthazar Gold, and this is of course, as the name suggests, going to be on the gold areas. So the hilt of the sword uh, will be this color, and the Trollblood also has a, or the, um, the Fen Blade, I guess, also has a, a collar that is gold as well, which will be painted in this color. So 
So the original clip uh, corrupted for this, but this is the tartan that I uh, I did for the model. Um, so that was Mephiston Red there as a base, as you can see. So this is a different model, of course. I recorded this uh, after I found the clip was corrupted. Um, I can't really call it tartan because it is not painted the way tartan would be. Um, it is just very simple checkerboard pattern with two different colors uh, to kind of simulate it. Uh, I'm not exactly proud of how it turns out, but from uh, from like tabletop distance, it looks pretty good. So that was Mephiston Red. Now we're going to fill in the rest of the checkers with Warboss Green, as I did with uh, my other Fen Blades and other Trollbloods in general when I painted them. Um, so you can see, like, you just make a checkerboard with red and then fill in with whatever color you want, basically. Well, make a checkerboard with whatever color and then fill it in. So in this case, checkerboard with red, fill in with green. Um, and yeah, like I said, it looks kind of sloppy, but from tabletop uh, point of view, it looks a lot better. So then we just re-highlight the red with uh, Evil Sun Scarlet, and that's all I do for my uh, for my tartan. So just make sure you have a sm small enough brush and you have your arms uh, locked in a position where they won't... Uh, Shake around so that you have full control over your line work when you're uh, when you're doing it. So with the tartan done, um, we now move on to washes. So we're going to be using Nuln Oil, Agrax Earthshade, and for the skin we are using Drakenhof Nightshade. So starting with the Nuln Oil, you just cover that on all the armor and brown bits. Agrax Earthshade goes on to the headband and the gold areas. And Drakenhof Nightshade, of course, goes onto the skin. So now we will be doing some highlighting. We're going to highlight the skin with Altdorf Guard Blue. Um, definitely be sure to water down your paint here uh, so that you have full control and it isn't too thick. Because if you cover up an area that uh, wasn't supposed to be covered, it's going to be very hard to get rid of some thick paint. Whereas with a thin layer, it won't clog any detail and it'll be a bit easier to cover up. So this is just hitting basically all over the skin except for the lowest parts um, where you want to leave that wash and uh, the fang showing in the uh, in the recesses but yep just take your time going over pretty much the whole area of the skin and you should have a great result in the end so now we are highlighting the darker browns with doom bull brown uh, so of course this is the pouches and the little bags at the back and the uh, the handle thing <laughs> on the uh, on the greatsword. And now we're just painting some details on the face with Ceramite White. Uh, by the way, that was that is what the uh, bandana was painted with. And of course, my uh, my big dumb head gets in the camera here. I zoomed it in a bit too much, but you can see how we're painting the teeth and the eyes 
um, as carefully as possible. Uh, sorry about kind of messing that up though. And then we go and cover back up a little bit of white that uh, went over the eye, made the eye look a little bit too big. And uh, yeah, so that's what the final result looked like. And now we're just going to wash the teeth with Eggdrax Earthshade to try to get some of the detail back and uh, just make them not look so clean. And there we go, this is the finished result. Um, so I added some Blood for the Blood God to the bandana on his head. I also uh, put a layer of Administratum Gray over his, uh, his scales um, to really make those highlighted back up. And then I just did a quick, uh, a quick dry brush in certain areas of Lead Belcher over the armor. Uh, it doesn't really shine through that much because I didn't really want it to. I wanted to keep it a bit dark. And uh, yeah, other than that, the model is complete. I also put a little bit of Screamer Pink on his tongue, as you can see. But apart from that, this is the finished result for at least tabletop quality. I'm not going for any uh, award-winning paint jobs or anything here. Um, but you can see the entire model there. There's his tartan. Uh, again, not too happy with the result, but that's I can't really do <laughs> much better than that. And it gets the point across at least from from a, a decent viewing distance. It looks it you know it looks the part. But uh, yeah, so thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. As always, your support means a lot to the channel, and it'll help me uh, bring more tutorials, battle reports, lore videos, and everything to you guys. Uh, before we go, here's the comparison to the Fenblade uh, unit leader, which I painted uh, the day before. You can see, very similar. I'm very happy with how both of them came out. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in, in the next one. Goodbye.